Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Before we get started with our presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A button. You can pose your question to a specific university or you can ask a general question of any and all of the universities. Also, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there is one other block of sessions this evening, so please feel free to sign up for that if you haven't already done so at the same website where you signed up for this session. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, which would be Unifor University of California, Irvine. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're excited to have you. So at UCI, um, we are a really beautiful location, and I'm so lucky to represent this cool university. I, my name is Andrea. I grew up outside of California. Um, I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Michigan, spent lots of time throughout the Midwest. Uh, but after college, I got to come to the beautiful state of California and learn about the UC system. So as part of that, UCI is actually part of this system of campuses, which you can see on the map here. UCLA is probably the best known, UC Berkeley, um, but we are not too far behind. We are still a top 10 public university. Uh, but one thing that we, I think, have going for us is our location. We are 10 minutes from Newport Beach, 75 and sunny pretty much year round. So we're really lucky when it comes to that. Um, we are also um, really lucky to be part of these research universities and no matter all, which UC you end up at, if you are considering a UC, they all have really great academic reputations and really great vibes. A little more about Irvine that I think is pretty unique and special is that we are built in a perfect circle. So we are only 55 years young, it's a relatively young campus. Um, so we, when they built our campus, they wanted to build a campus that was interdisciplinary and how it approached things. So uh, they built a campus where it was easy to get around because our faculty are actually expected to either teach in two different schools or two different disciplines or teach in one and do research in another or incorporate this interdisciplinary idea into their work. And we make it really easy for students to double major or major and minor in two very different disciplines. Some other like, I don't know, scale things about this uh, um, picture that you see here. The campus looks kind of big on this picture, but it only takes about 20 minutes to walk from one side of that big circle to the other. This is Ring Road. This is really a hub of campus. And then in the very middle is Aldridge Park. It's beautiful. It's green, 11,000 trees, uh, great Wi-Fi. So students study there a lot, especially because of our great outdoor weather. Our freshman housing is also on this circle. About 80% of our students as freshmen live on campus during a normal year. COVID, all things are off at the moment. And then our enrollment shows you that we are a large institution. So 30,000 undergraduates, about 6,500 graduate students, half of those are over in our medical school though. So they're offsite. But being a research school, we um, still need to do a lot of research. So we rely on our undergrad students to help us with that research because of this dynamic of graduate and undergraduate. So what are our majors? Well, we have lots of them. Uh, you can make anything on here uh, into what you want it to be to really help you uh, critically think in a lot of different fields in a lot of different ways. And our academic advising staff are there to help support you and shepherd you through the process to help you graduate in a timely way as well, which is important to us. But things we're best known for, we're probably best known in the biology, pre-med, pre-health field. We have 10 different bio majors. We have a school of nursing, School of Public Health, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, uh, and I mentioned our, our medical school as well. Then the other area we're really well regarded in is engineering and computer science. My favorite thing about these majors is they expect students to do a senior design project. So this is where a nearby company might hire a group of students, hire, they get college credit, no money at this point, uh, to, to fix some sort of problem at their institution or at their, um, at their business. And then students are able to add that to their resume, which really helps them launch into their career after they graduate. A lot of our classes too, especially with our business students, they don't have any classes on Friday because we really want our students to have those hands-on opportunities. They're doing internships on Fridays, so um, there are fewer classes offered on those days. A few things that I think are unique about our campus in terms of majors, we have a top 10 dance major in the country. There's a conservatory approach, which is not necessarily what you'd expect at a top 10 public research STEM focused campus. We also have a top five criminology program in the US. We offer 14 different languages and tons more that you see here. 
On the next slide, just a little bit about the area. It's a very suburban feeling area, but Irvine is actually a large city. So it's a, a um, large city. It is halfway between LA and San Diego, about 10 minutes from Newport Beach, which you can see here. And we're lucky to have about a third of all Fortune 500 companies right in the city of Irvine. So lots of access to opportunities to build that resume. Um, and whether that's on campus in one of our research labs or off campus on some of the things in our community. Also to note here, you can see that little green circle, which is Eldridge Park that I mentioned earlier, and the very foreground, which is just walking steps from campus. We have Target, Trader Joe's, In-N-Out Burger. Uh, we have a movie theater, all the an Amazon Dropbox, a Dunkin' Donuts, because there's already four Starbucks on campus. So, you know, we got to balance it somehow. Um, so lots and lots right um, outside our door. And last, but definitely not least, um, we're the Anteaters, which is just a really fun mascot. We're the only ones in the country that are the Anteaters. We have over 600 clubs on campus. Our students like to be super involved. The picture you see here is of our students setting a Guinness World Record for the world's largest dodgeball game. So we do a lot of fun kind of quirky stuff at UCI. We have, we're an NCAA D1 school, uh, but we also have one of the top esports programs in the entire country. And applying. So uh, we are, we, UCL will not use SAT or ACT test scores in our admissions review, selection, or scholarships for fall 22 applicants. And right now the plan is to continue that beyond uh, for out-of-state students as well. When you apply to the UC system, you actually apply using one campus and then you just check each UC you're interested in. Uh, you can see, and see some other info on the screen there, specifically that we don't do early action or early decision. And if you're a junior, you do have to apply during November of your senior year. So that's really important. On the next screen, I hope you get your camera out so you can take a quick picture about what that might look like for you um, if you wanna follow up with me. Thanks so much, have a great one. Thank you very much, University of California, Irvine. Um, to any attendees who just joined us, uh, just a reminder to please feel free to use that Q&A button to ask any questions you have of the panelists at any time. But up next is California Lutheran University. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I know um, during these times, it can be tough with Zoom fatigue and everything like that. So I'll try and make this short and sweet. Um, and definitely we wanna hear from you guys as well, questions um, and anything else that might be on your minds. California Lutheran University, if you haven't heard of us, um, we are located in Thousand Oaks, California. It's a little over an hour north um, of Los Angeles, just up along the coastline, uh, great weather year round. Uh, and I'll kind of go over a little bit of background and, and touch on application and stuff. But one thing I do want to touch on is just the name itself. Um, as an admission counselor and when I'm traveling uh, pre-COVID-19, I usually um, get asked the question a lot, do I have to be Lutheran in order to apply to your campus? Do I even have to be religious? Um, and the answer is no, you do not have to identify as Lutheran. You do not, you do not, you do, you do not even, even need to identify as religious. Um, we have a variety of different um, religions that are uh, represented among our campus community and our student body. And you'll see that in our next slide. So here you can see kind of the campus makeup. Um, as you can see, we're a little bit of a smaller campus, just over 3,000 undergraduate students, uh, really smaller class sizes. The average class size is about 17. Um, and so it really allows opportunities to develop those one-on-one -on -one connections with professors and your peers, uh, and definitely opens up the door for a lot of opportunities. Um, as you can also see, more than half of our uh, student body makes up um, students who come from underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, and as you can see, uh, almost 40 different faiths are represented among our campus community. Uh, I think in the midst of, of everything going on, uh, there's a lot of questions about college in general. And so I think the statistic at the bottom is very important. 97% um, of our graduates are either employed or within graduate school after nine months of graduation or within nine months after graduation. Um, so definitely you're gonna get the return on your investment um, and we'll make sure that you're set up for the next stage. There's also a number of different majors and minors that we offer. I can go into detail if you would like um, during the, the Q&A portion, um, and I'd be happy to address that. I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one appointments as well to go over any specifics that will cater to your uh, passions or interests or, or anything that's related to your situation as well. Uh, again, just kind of relating to the smaller campus community setup. There's a lot of support centers and services. Um, internships is a big part of our education. I think um, in these days, most of us can agree that employers want to see more than just a college degree. They want to see that you have some, some type of practical experience and knowledge in the industry. Um, so it's a very critical and essential part of our education that we make sure students have that. 
as part of the repertoire of skills. Um, so once they graduate, they are more competitive and more distinguishable um, to attain those careers. Student life, you'll get a lot of different events uh, and things that you can be a part of, clubs, organizations, um, pretty standard among most college campuses. Uh, but again, kind of the smaller campus community, you're going to see a lot of familiar faces and you can kind of develop those bonds um, where you can, you know, have those lifelong friendships um, and you can kind of see each other grow throughout your four years here. We also have uh, pretty nice residential housing. As you can see, we're ranked 12th best in California. Um, they're a little bit on the nicer side. Um, they do have, offer a little bit more privacy where there's no communal bathrooms. Um, you do have free parking and free laundry on our residents as well. Uh, and definitely, um, if you have any other questions about this, I can go into detail about that as well. A couple newer facilities, um, we could talk about those more later. I want to make sure that we have time to kind of go over application requirements. Um, so we do accept the common application, official high school transcripts, uh, and at least one letter of recommendation from either a teacher or a counselor. We are test optional, that's going to be moving forward. So you do not need to take your SAT or ACT um, in order to apply um, or be accepted. We do have a couple of deadlines. We have an early action deadline that is non-binding. So if you're liking what you're hearing and you want to learn more about it and you do end up applying, um, just keep in mind that November 1st is our early action deadline. Um, you can receive a decision a lot earlier and you could be eligible for scholarships that go all the way up to full tuition. And I'm going to go over those in the next slide as well. Um, so as you can see, we have a little bit of breakdown of the scholarships that we offer. Um, as you can see, 97% of our students receive some form of financial aid assistance, um, with the average financial aid package being just over $37,000. Um, and then a number of different scholarships that we offer. Uh, I do want to say that if you do submit an application, you're automatically considered for any academic and merit-based scholarships. Those can range from $5,000 all the way up to $25,000. The presidential scholarship is kind of what I alluded to with the early action deadline. If you apply by November 1st, um, you're, you can be considered for those scholarships and those can go from $25,000 all the way up to full tuition. Um, visual performing arts, if you have any passions or talents in that realm, you can apply for that. And those scholarships also go up to full tuition. But the Public Prize Promise Scholarship is also a unique opportunity and I wanna make sure that I at least touch on it. If you're unaware, um, this is a scholarship that commends those who are accepted and apply and get into a number of the UC schools. Um, and so there are six UC institutions that are associated with this scholarship. If you um, apply and are accepted to Cal Lutheran, as well as one of those six UC schools, um, and you choose to come to us, we'll actually award you a scholarship that matches the difference in cost between us and the UC, um, so that we can make things a little bit more affordable, being a private institution, um, and more accessible for our student body. Here's a little bit of contact information. Again, I can, um, I'll be around for any Q&A, and I'd be happy to uh, address any of your questions or concerns, but I do appreciate your time. And again, my name is Chris, one of the admission counselors. Thank you very much, California Lutheran. Um, yes, just a reminder, please do feel free to send any questions you may have via the Q&A. Um, up next is University of Redlands. Um, you're on mute. There we go. Just trying to unmute myself there. Um, well, hi, everyone. I hope that you can see my screen. Um, my name is Belinda Sandoval Sosueta, and I represent the University of Redlands. And um, so let me tell you, let me get into it and tell you a little bit about our campus community. Um, so we are located in Southern California. Um, and literally what I like to say is that we are sort of in the heart of Southern California. And let me tell you why. Um, partly because we are about 60 uh, miles away from the beaches, 60 miles away from the desert or less and uh, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes or so from the mountain. So you get some of the most beautiful views uh, right from uh, the campus, uh, the heart of the campus. We're also considered a top Southern California college town um, as sort of shared uh, by AAA magazine, which is really cool. Um, one of the things that's important for us to note, if you're looking at the picture here, we also are a campus that really enjoys spending a lot of time outdoors. And so you can see sort of all uh, the trees there. Um, and that's a, a, an area that we call the quad, which is sort of the heart of the campus. And you definitely get, you know, you'll see students sort of hanging out um, on the campus and, um, you know, maybe a class or two outside in the lawn as well. Um, in addition, so let me see how I can. Oh, there we go. Um, 
one of the other things about our campus community, as I shared already, our location is really um, a wonderful place to be a college student where you get to really live and learn um, in a really dynamic location. Um, coming from out of state, you would be most likely uh, flying into the Los Angeles International Airport or perhaps Ontario International Airport. The Ontario Airport is about 30 minutes or so from our campus. But you can see, just as I shared, really the accessibility um, to get to lots of different places right from the heart of campus um, really does make for an extraordinary college experience. Uh, the other kind of pieces to note about our community and sort of our location is we sit on about 160 acres. You can get from one end of the campus to the other in about a 10 minute walk. Um, so things are pretty accessible. And then you can get to the downtown area of Redlands, probably I think the estimate is about an eight minute bike ride. So um, it's pretty accessible again to go sort of explore the greater Southern California area, but also to explore the area um, where we sit. Um, you'll see a residential area is pretty much what surrounds our campus, some orange groves um, and beautiful palm trees. Our campus community is a close knit community. We have just a little bit over 2,500 undergraduate students. Um, you can see from the bullet points there on my presentation, we have students representing 45 states, 45 different countries of citizenship, lots of different uh, languages that are spoken in our community and a very diverse uh, student body. Our students are required to live on campus and then you're guaranteed housing all four years, which is really great. So you get that opportunity to build community from day one. We have everything from sororities and fraternities, uh, culturally focused clubs and organizations. Um, we have outdoor programs. We also compete in division three for our athletic program. And so there's a lot of friendly competition there. Um, we also have intramural sports for students that aren't interested necessarily in, in competing at that level. And then we also, um, we counted up sort of how many activities and events there are. And there's usually over 200 different types of events that a student could participate or be a part of during the academic year. Um, we are also really unique in that we require our students to do community service. And while we talk about it as a requirement, you should know that most of our students will actually go above and beyond the, the service requirement just because it's, it's a part of what our students really enjoy doing. Um, but the idea is that we want our students to be able to give back. Um, we also want the, the experiences from the classroom to really come to life in these real world experiences. And so you certainly get that through community service activities, but also through internships. Um, opportunities to do research and so forth. So all of that is absolutely possible. Here is a list of our majors. We have over 40 different programs that you can choose from. Some of our most popular majors include biology, psychology, communication sciences and disorders, which is a pretty uh, unique program, as well as our business programs. But then you'll see there's lots of other programs, including uh, majors in our School of Business, as well as a Create Your Own Major through the Johnston Center for Integrative Studies which also is a living and learning community. So there's a lot that you can do. Many of our students will um, come up with the double majors or do a major and a, and a minor um, or a double minor. So there's all kind of endless combinations um, when you look at this list. We've also been rolling out things that, um, or programs that we call four plus one, which give you a, an opportunity to not only do your undergraduate program, but also to get your master's degree. And so we have one in our education program, which is a four plus one. It's a bachelor's degree, a master of arts in teaching and a California teaching credential. And then we also have a program in business where you can do your major and get your MBA, just adding one more year to your program. So lots of opportunities um, to really kind of start to think about your career beyond the bachelor's degree. Um, I shared with you already information about the Johnston Center and the School of Music, but these are unique elements that are part of our academic um, offerings. And so the Johnston Center um, has been around since the 60s, and so it's an opportunity um, for you to create your own major. Um, I'll just kind of go through a couple more really quick slides. Um, our admissions process is uh, very typical. Um, we do have an early action an early decision uh, process as well as regular action. And we are a member of the common application. We are also um, test optional and will be um, for a long, long time to come. We offer merit scholarships to students as well as, as institutional funding. 
We have a program called a Cal Grant Guarantee. So if you are a 3.5 G, oh, this is our, never mind, scratch that. That's for our California students. So I slipped up there. Um, the last thing I'll kind of share with you and, and for me to wrap up is really this idea that um, on our campus, it's really important um, that you uh, join us and transition well, but it's also really important for us that you graduate in four years time. And so one of the things that we talk about is our four year promise. And so um, this is a commitment for you to be able to graduate in four years. So thank you so much for your time and I hope to be able to share more with you. Thank you very much, University of Redlands. Um, heading into the second half of our presentations, up next we have Oregon State University. Hello, everyone. Great to be with you all tonight. Um, thank you so much for having me. And my name is Rachel Paris. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm an admissions advisor who works with prospective high school students just like you to help you navigate applying to school and learning more about the university. So for those who are unfamiliar with OSU, we have multiple locations across the state. We are out there as a university. We encourage students to get out and have experiences to connect with their learning in the classroom. We have two campuses. Our main is in Corvallis, and then we also have a second in Bend, Oregon. We also have an e-campus online as well. In college, you're going to have a lot of time outside the classroom, so getting involved is a great way. We have over 400 clubs and organizations. We have academic programs such as engineering clubs. We have our Corgi Club started by our own tour ambassadors. We also have an active Greek life with over 30 different chapters. We have music ensembles that are open for all students so you don't have to major in music. We are the oldest marching band in the Pac-12. So that's a little fun fact about us. Our study abroad hits every continent. Faculty and internship abroad opportunities are available if you're interested and you're still able to graduate, graduate excuse me, on time with scholarships to help you as well. We also have seven distinct cultural resource centers for students to get support and share their resources. This is a great way to celebrate all students from different backgrounds and identities as well. It's a great time, again, to maximize your college experience. Getting involved helps you build connection to campus as well as relationships with other students as well. We, if we don't have a club or organization that you have, feel free to get a group of students together and you can have a staff member advise you and start your own club. We are Pac-12 for D1 for seven men's and nine women's sports. We also have intramural sports where you can play other OSU students in soccer, wheelchair basketball, volleyball, and even esports such as Madden, Rocket League, and Mario Kart. So as much as it's important to be in class, again, we want students to get out there and involved on campus. OSU is only one of two universities in the country that has all four federal grants for land, sun, sea, and space. As a student, you have multiple opportunities to participate in research, even beginning your first year at OSU. Some of our tour ambassadors have begun research their first year and have done it all four years um, of their undergrad. Having research not only allows you to connect what you're learning to inside the classroom, but you can apply these experiences on your resume for future internships, for employers, and even grad school. You will be engaged academically strong um, with opportunities with experiential learning, research, study abroad, and um, even our coastal campus Hatfield Marine Science Center to get more experiences if you're looking into marine biology and stuff like that. So OSU is organized into 11 different colleges offering over 200 undergraduate programs. We have 100 graduate programs and you don't have to apply to each individual college. Please use a QR code on the screen to explore more about colleges and find your majors. Some of our leading majors include our engineering program. We have 15 accredited programs such as mechanical engineering, but more unique programs such as manufacturing and environmental engineering as well. Our business college has an 89% placement into the workforce after graduation. And for those who don't know what they wanna major in, or like I say, are academically curious, not an issue at all, but something unique OSU offers is our university exploratory studies program. We also have an honors college. And moving on to what we consider is when making decisions, we look at multiple different criteria. So we're looking at your grades, what you've taken, your overall GPA trend, and how have you done over high school? We don't 
uh, accept you based off your major. So you don't need to declare a major to apply for admission. I wanna say that everyone will be reviewed regardless of your GPA and your test scores. And we understand that everyone has a unique situation and everyone's journey and circumstances are different. So we do have a preferred 3.0 to 3.2 GPA, but you are, if you're still below, I still want you to apply because we consider again, everyone's situation. Part of the application is also an essay. We want to get to know who you are as a person and what would you bring to campus as a future beaver. We understand that many of you were severely impacted with COVID and remote learning, and we take that into consideration when looking at your grades and other materials. You also have the option to include an optional statement of your application to explain any unforeseen circumstances, such as bullying, um, injury, or anything else that you want to share. We are test optional as well. So for our scholarships, uh, you first, is admission based, so it's based off your application. Our deadline is February 1st, so it's really important that you get your application in as soon as possible. Application for admission also serves as um, your application form for this type of aid as well. Our second type is Scholar Dollars, so our own um, homegrown app, and then um, of course FAFSA as well. So to keep up to date with all of our information, please follow us on social media at Beaver VIP. If you're wanting to learn more or need help with the application process, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting as your admissions advisor to make sure that you have all the information that you need before you join us as a Beaver. Or if you're admitted, feel free to send me an email. My contact information is on the right. Feel free to check out our virtual visits with our QR code and then also find your advisor QR code as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Oregon State. Uh, moving on to our next presenter, we have DigiPen Institute of Technology. Hi, everybody. Thank you for um, joining here this evening. My name is Katie Clark. I work in our Office of Admissions and Outreach at DigiPen Institute of Technology. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the school since you probably have not heard of us before. We are a private four-year college. We were founded in 1988 by the co-founder of Nintendo of America, Mr. Claude Comer. As you might imagine from an intro like that, um, our main focus is game design development. So we have four um, main areas of expertise, which include computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, and music and sound design. Um, but we were the first school in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming specifically. And that continues to be the main reason that students choose to come to DigiPen is because they're interested in video games um, and working in the game development industry. It binds our students together. It's their common interest. And so if that's something that is of interest to you, please check us out. Um, we are located in the Redmond area near Seattle, Washington, just across Lake Washington, so about a 15 minute bus ride to downtown. Um, but we're just uh, up the street from Microsoft headquarters. We have a Google campus near us. Uh, Facebook Oculus has a campus near us. Um, Amazon, of course, has a campus near us. So there's a lot of tech companies in our area, of course, in the Redmond area. Um, beyond tech companies, like our students oftentimes come looking for, we offer many opportunities to network with game development companies in the Redmond area as well. There's over 450 gaming and tech companies just within a 20 mile radius of our campus here in Redmond. And so that's a really great opportunity for students who are interested in game design and development um, because there's opportunities for internships, for networking. We bring these company representatives to our campus for company days to talk to students, to do portfolio reviews, to do mock interviews. Um, and so there's a lot of really cool uh, game related things that will happen on our campus as well. Like I said, we were the first school in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming. We currently offer 10 degree programs, eight undergraduate and two more graduate programs focusing on our undergrads today, but we do offer two masters as well, if that's what you're interested in. We're fairly small. Um, we have about 950 undergrad students and about 100 uh, master's students, so about 1,100 total. 
Our average class size is about 20 students with a lot of opportunity for one-on-one -on -one interaction with both your peers as well as faculty members who have worked in the video game industry or the animation and film industry for many years. And then our graduates are credited on over 1500 commercial video games. Um, our academic approach is very project based. And so uh, we combine academic fundamentals with which it consists of knowledge and theory, your very traditional lecture classes, you know, where you're sitting in a, a lecture hall and a professor is sharing their knowledge with you, as well as individual study and assignments, which is kind of the typical what you think of when you think of a college class, right? Um, but then about 50% of our curriculum is project based. And so our Students are put on interdisciplinary game teams. So our music students, our art students, our game design students, and our computer science students are all put in one class. Um, and then they form game teams, which create full scale games and animation projects. So you create two to four of those during your time with us, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on your major. Um, and it's just a really great opportunity to learn how to function within the game development industry. Our degree programs, like I mentioned earlier, fall into these main buckets. So we have our computer science programs, including a machine learning program, program where we teach audio programming um, and a digital audio program. We have our game design and development degrees, which include a psychology based approach to game design and a computer science based approach to game design. We have a graphics programming degree where you learn how to create game engines. We have a music and uh, sound design program, which is more of a performing arts degree, but you also learn sound recording and audio engineering. And then we have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, which teaches um, art and animation, traditional art, 2D animation, 3D animation, 3D modeling, etc. And then as you're thinking about which program to apply to, um, it's the whole reason that I have a job here um, is to help you determine which program is a good fit. So reach out to me, please, if um, you're interested in any of these programs, and I'm happy to talk more about the differences, connect you with the student, um, connect you with opportunities to learn about your program. But in general, if you think you're interested in computer science, we're looking for uh, pre-calculus with a B minus or better and a background in math and physics. If you're interested in game design, we want to see a wide variety of interests and mostly thinking about how players interact with your games or people interact with your projects. For fine arts, we're looking for a foundation in traditional art. Um, so taking a sketchbook with you and drawing things that you see everywhere you go. And then for music and sound design, we want to see that you have proficiency in a in specific instrument. It can be your vocals and then familiarity with uh, musical concepts and ability to read sheet music. Our student life, as you can imagine, centers around uh, game design and video gaming. And so um, our students are all very interested um, in game design and development. They connect over our Halloween pageant, um, LAN parties, our spirit week. Um, they go to PAX together, the Penny Arcade Expo. They go to the Comic Cons. Um, and then at our career fair, they also, they showcase their work to employers through internship fair, through career fair. Um, it's very gaming uh, related though. And then these are some events and opportunities to connect with us that are coming up. So um, if you're interested, our next opportunity to connect in a week long series is gonna be the first week of May, where we talk about each degree program in detail. It's a great series. We have a couple of workshops coming up over the next couple of weekends, a game design workshop and a game programming workshop. Um, and then please feel free to reach out if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, DigiPen. Um, and our final presenter this evening will be San Diego State University. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. My name is Adriana Ramirez. I am the admissions counselor for San Diego State University. So we'll go ahead and get started, close out the evening. Um, so we are a California State University school. We are part of the CSU system, not the UC system. Uh, and we have our own application, which I will go over in the next few slides. 
So we are a big university. We have over 34,000 students total, a little over 29,000 of those students are undergraduate students. Now we are number 30 in Forbes America's best value colleges. I like to say that we're a great, you know, great education for a great price. Um, the total price, including basic tuition and fees, non-resident tuition and food and housing is around 42,000 for the year. Um, so that is a great price, especially as a non-resident attending a school in the state of California. Now, we are top 35 nationwide for our ethnic diversity. We're not only diverse within our student body, but we're so diverse within our faculty and staff. And it really does translate into what we offer as a university as well. Now, if you're looking to study abroad, you're, you're looking at the right school. We're number one in California and number fifth in the nation for the number of students study, uh, that we send studying abroad every semester. Now we have 200 academic degree choices specifically for undergraduate majors. We have a little over 90 undergraduate majors to choose from. Some of our more popular majors that we are known for, um, business, engineering, um, biology, chemistry, our teaching um, majors as well, communications, kinesiology, um, and by far nursing. Nursing is our number one most competitive major at San Diego State University, and it is a direct entry program. Now, uh, we're located in beautiful uh, San Diego, California, which is the second largest city in California, but what's great about campus is we're very centrally located in San Diego. And how I like to describe it is we're 10, 15 minutes away from the nearest beach. So you can head to the beach in the morning, do your studying at the beach. And then we're 10, 15 minutes away east from campus to the nearest hiking trail, which is Cal's Mountain. And then you can end out your evening by hopping on the trolley. We have a trolley stop directly on campus and catching a Padre game, which is about 20 minutes away from campus via the trolley ride. So we're very centrally located in San Diego, which does provide our students um, you know, many opportunities. Um, for internships, jobs, and also a way to get on and off campus, especially with our trolley stop. Now, I did mention our study abroad programs and how we are ranked. Um, we have over 300 different study abroad programs you can be a part of, and we go to about 70 different countries. Majority of your majors do require you to study abroad. Um, if your major doesn't, of course, you can still go and you can study abroad more than once. Um, other ways we like to promote student success here. We are an undergraduate research institution. So that does create a lot of hands-on learning opportunities. In addition, more internship and job opportunities as well. We have our Weber Honors College. This is our Honors College at SDSU that you do have to apply and be admitted into. Um, you minor in interdisciplinary studies. Your class sizes tend to be a little bit smaller, around 22 to 1. Um, but that being said, our average class size here is 25 to 1. And then, of course, study abroad is a requirement. Now we have our career services department. They do everything on campus from working with you with resume shops, um, interview workshops. They help you with jobs on and off campus, internships with our Aztec mentoring program. So one of the best resources that you can utilize here when you're in, when you're in Aztec. Now, as I mentioned when I first started, we are a California State University school. Um, we are similar to the UC system, but we are not a part of the UC system. You will find our application on calstate.edu backslash apply. Now there are 23 CSU schools and you will fill out one application and you're going to select however many CSU schools you wanna send your application to. Our application is open from October 1st through December 4th. And in alignment with the California State University system, we will be test blind. So we will not require or consider the SAT or ACT for fall 2022 um, term. Now for the rest of the terms, um, if I have any lower classmen um, that are um, on this call, you, of course you can reach out to me. That has yet to be determined if we will continue that process after the fall 2022 term, okay? Now, this is our freshman admission criteria. We look at something called your A through G course curriculum. Um, these are subjects that you see here listed on the slide. None of these subjects should look different. Um, you are all probably more than halfway completed with these A through G subjects. Now, we will calculate your GPA through this A through G course subject, looking at your 12th or excuse me, 10th through 12th grades. We will weight your GPA up to eight semesters. So what that means is if you have taken any honors, AP, um, I, 
B or dual enrollment courses between 10th and 11th year grades, we will award you extra points onto your GPA. It breaks down to one point per semester, two points per class. So the max at points you can get is eight points. Now you do wanna maintain your overall grade point average through your senior year, because when you, if you are admitted, we are going to ask you to turn in a report card to show your 12th grade progression. So please make sure you are maintaining that same GPA you were admitted on. Now, all of your grades are self-reported. We do not ask for official transcripts when we are reviewing your application. So the best advice I can give you is have a copy of your transcript out when you are completing your application on the Cal State website. Now we do have some student involvement as well, over 350 student organizations, 46 fraternities and sororities on campus, along with our student um, government as well. And then with our student life, we have our Mission Bay Aquatic Center, our Aztec Recreation Center that you can be a part of. And then of course, living on campus, you are required to live on campus for the first two years, so you have guaranteed housing. And then of course, sports, we love our sports. We're NCAA Division I for sports. Um, we do play tomorrow for first round of March Madness versus uh, Syracuse. So make sure you do tune in and uh, vote for the Aztecs or root for the Aztecs. And then um, these are all of our admission staff that are located in our office. Um, I will go ahead and put our contact information in the chat as well. We have our open house coming up. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks. Hey, thank you very much, San Diego State. And thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, we do have a couple of minutes left. So attendees, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to send them through via the Q&A. Uh, perhaps we can do a very quick round of questions ourselves. So if I could ask you to turn on your video cameras, presenters, and answer the following question in about 30 seconds or so. Uh, what's your favorite event or tradition on campus um, or a fun fact about your school? We'll go in the same order. Let's start with uh, UC Irvine. Okay, so I already mentioned the Guinness World Record dodgeball tournament. So you actually have four Guinness World Records, but part of being an anteater is learning how to zot. Um, this is the noise that a fake anteater makes when he eats an ant. But you get to do this, you take your two middle fingers down, you pull them back, you make a little anteater, and you go zot, zot, zot. And we cheer this all the time, graduation, esports, sports. It's just really fun, kind of quirky, but awesome. Hey, thank you. California Luther? Yes, um, definitely kind of alluding to the community aspect of our campus and community um, for all of our incoming students, just a way to kind of bond and, and sort of, you know, foster that engagement between them. We have this uh, uh, event through our student life office where you paint a rock and you actually take it up on this uh, cool hike that we have. Um, and it's just kind of like a way to commemorate and express yourself and just start uh, the journey of this next um, college experience. Great, thank you. Uh, University of Redlands. So um, sort of a fun tradition for us, we've actually have had a live mascot um, since 1917, I believe. And uh, we are the Bulldogs. And so we've had a live Bulldog since 1917. Our current um, mascot, her name is Addie, and she's the queen um, as she's known across campus. And she shows up to all kinds of events. Um, and when we are not in pandemic time, she actually um, hangs out during the work day in the admissions office. So if you ever come visit us, most likely she will be there. Thank you. Oregon State. Hey everyone. So I would say one of our fun kind of things that is just off campus is our 150 acre forest. And so you can go hiking, you can do like off trails, um, biking type of stuff like that. And some, so I enjoy that after a long day um, in the office when we pre-COVID um, and just getting that fresh air. So that's something fun about Oregon State. All right, uh, did you bet? Yeah, um, one of the coolest things about being a Digimon Dragon is our students are all going into game design and development, right? And so they're all interested in games. And one of the big things in the Seattle area is the Penny Arcade Expo or PAX, PAX West. So we actually have two booths at PAX West each year when it happens. We have our admissions booth where we talk to prospective students and we have our student booth where we have 10 different student games teams that will come and showcase their games in arcade cabinets, hand out cards, um, network with people. It's a, it's a really fun time. And one of my favorite parts of the show is getting to work that booth. Great, thank you. Uh, San Diego State. 
Well, I'm a huge sports fan, so I'm going to go back to basketball. Uh, basketball season is very exciting for us. Um, I can't wait till COVID's over so we can fill Vieja's arena um, and watch our basketball games. You probably saw on the slide, all students that attend SDSU get to go to the home games for free. Um, so there's just nothing like having a bunch of red and black in a stadium rooting on um, our basketball team. Great, thank you. Um, thank you to all of our presenters this evening for your informative presentations. Um, I'm sure the students uh, would also like to thank you. And certainly thank you to all of our students for attending this evening. Uh, just a few quick items to wrap up. When you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask you to take a minute and complete. And again, there is one other block of sessions this evening. So please feel free to sign up for those. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again. Uh, good night and good luck in your college search.